This video gives you a glimpse into the future of warfare, because what you might be considering as new military tech is probably already old. Like Navy SEALs that can navigate underwater hands-free and quickly. Soldiers that can see through the thick walls of the Abrams tank without having to expose themselves. And drones that can fly horizontally like an airplane until they stop to hover in place to collect intelligence. See, what is new to military technology is convergence. In other words, when a military's various parts are interconnected into a single entity. So that hovering drone could send live footage to an F-35, giving it beyond line of sight visuals, where it could help a gunner inside a tank with live fire feedback. This allows for a sort of intelligence cloud that has never been possible before. But that's not it. Sprinkle on top of all that the power of artificial intelligence, which can analyze large amounts of data, calculate the rules of engagement, and make decisions in a split second. Try to imagine a military version of ChatGPT, except for it's already here. And this is why the future of warfare on land, in the air, and underwater is not what you think. Let's start with wearables. Future combat could be fought in the air, not with fighter jets, but with personal jetpacks. Royal Marines are already flying through the air to board ships in seconds, thanks to technology developed by Gravity Industries. This technology has the potential to completely change battle tactics, especially above ocean or rugged terrain. However, it also has the potential to make any military auditor squirm. At a price of over $450,000 per unit, armies won't be handing one out to every soldier anytime soon. This is IVOS, and no, it's not an Apple product. IVOS stands for Integrated Visual Augmentation System, and is yet another one of these new tools, central to combined arms operation. Developed by the US military, these are portable goggles that integrate classical optics like night and thermal vision but also use supercomputing technology to include augmented reality. This allows troops to visually communicate objectives in real time, improving situational awareness. This technology is also modular, which means that it can be integrated into existing platforms and equipment to give soldiers 360-degree vision inside armored vehicles and keep a closer eye on maintenance and repair requirements. The IVAS program reportedly costs U.S. taxpayers $22 billion to develop, so far. That may sound expensive, but with an annual budget of $800 billion and rising every year, the U.S. military spends that much money every 10 days. So it's just a drop in the bucket. Speaking of drops, similar technology is also being tested for underwater use by companies like JFD. Named ShadowNav, this visor gives special operations teams enhanced vision even in murky and dark waters. NATO is also testing a life-saving addition to the modern soldier's toolkit. The DTA system is a wearable sensor that works a bit like a Fitbit. It will help medics collect vital data and determine the extent to which a soldier may be injured. Strapped around a soldier's chest, this technology can assess injuries faster and more accurately than a field medic, allowing them to administer aid far quicker. However, all this added equipment means added weight, and with a U.S. soldier's average combat load weight already surpassing 100 pounds, militaries risk exhausting their troops before even reaching combat areas. As a result, exoskeletons are being tested by various militaries to counter this problem. Mainly fitted around the knees and ankles, these electric systems like the Onyx developed by Lockheed Martin can already double a soldier's leg strength and endurance. Imagine having all this military tech but only being able to use one of them. It's like dating five girls but only being able to f have fun with one of them. Or having Netflix but being limited to the shows in one region. Unless you have Private Internet Access VPN, the sponsor of today's video. Like many other things, browsing online should not be done unprotected. When you're on public Wi-Fi networks at airports, coffee shops, friends' houses, and even at your own house, your internet traffic could be viewed by various different entities before reaching the intended website. A VPN safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel and hides your IP address so your private info cannot be exploited. 
With private internet access VPN, you get to pick your online location out of 84 countries and all 50 US states, allowing you to gain access to websites and streaming services that are only available in those locations. Even when it comes to shopping for things like games and flight tickets, sometimes you get better deals when you shop online from different regions. Private internet access is available on all platforms, and you can protect your entire household with an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. So click the link in the description and get an 83% discount on private internet access VPN. That's just over $2 a month, and you also get 4 extra months completely free of charge. Where exoskeletons are unavailable, autonomous infantry platforms are already proven to help reduce load stress. In 2013, DARPA, the United States Advanced Research Program, partnered with Boston Dynamics to develop the Legget Squad support system, also known as LS3. Used as a logistical tool rather than a tactical one, the LS3 could carry up to 400 pounds of its squad's load, travel 20 miles without refueling, and also act as an auxiliary power unit by recharging equipment while on patrol. However, the LS3 was not a success. It was complicated to repair and had a very, very loud diesel engine. There was also a much cheaper alternative, mules. They're much cheaper, don't break down, and don't make a lot of noise, for the most part. On the other hand, smaller tactical robots have been used in militaries since the early 2000s, like the Talon. With a towing capacity of around 750 pounds, this little helper was mainly used as a bomb disposal unit, and even helped with search and rescue missions during 9-11. Its successor, the Modular Advanced Armed Robotic System, was even more advanced. Mars is designed to be modular. It can house various equipment configurations, depending on the mission's requirements. Apart from bomb disposal, it had a range of surveillance tools and non-lethal weapons, enhancing soldiers' safety and operational range. Unlike the Talon, which was primarily a support robot, Mars could also be deployed for force protection, sentry duties, and reconnaissance. Recent advancements in electronics and battery efficiency means that modern autonomous tactical and logistical platforms can run silently and charge themselves through solar power, for example. These platforms are modular and can accommodate a range of activities from turret mechanisms to takeoff and landing platforms for flying drones. Larger airborne platforms are also employed for surveillance and strike capabilities. For example, the new VBAT-128 is a vertical takeoff and landing drone capable of hovering for over 10 hours in the air to provide visual and radar surveillance. Needing only 30 minutes to prepare and a tiny 12 by 12 foot clearing to take off, this drone is a perfect addition to future combined arms operations. For example, if the VBAT is used as a communication bridge between F-35s and infantry patrols equipped with IVAS technology, it could enhance visual awareness far beyond line of sight. But how does the military achieve this seamless communication between units? And why does the US military already need to build a next-generation fighter jet? Since 2010, the US military has taken a unique approach with their aging F-16 fighter jets. They have been transforming them into unmanned drones. Controlled by advanced AI, these drones are designed to mimic the behavior of potential enemy aircraft, offering a realistic training scenario for pilots and air defense systems. This initiative not only extends the life of the older F-16s, but also helps test and develop the very systems that are replacing them. Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD, is a joint program between the US Air Force and Navy to replace current fighter aircraft. At the center of NGAD is the FAXX, a sixth-generation fighter jet. Sixth-generation fighters are a new breed of jets because they will redefine air superiority. Air superiority has always focused on an airplane's close-range dogfighting capabilities, but now it's being redefined as another piece in the combined arms philosophy of war. Sixth-generation fighters are made with cyber, space, and ground support in mind. They are designed to be part of a larger fleet of flying drones and will feature advanced sensors, weapon systems, and stealth. Stealth is the keyword here. 
The design features a double delta wing for enhanced maneuverability and lacks vertical tails, which reduce radar cross-section and drag. This will allow the FAXX to reach its objectives at much higher speeds, over longer ranges and without being picked up by enemy radar. But why are higher top speeds that important? See, the FAXX is made to replace the F-A-18 and the F-22. These jets were designed for conflict in Europe and the Middle East, where NATO air bases were quite close to each other. However, with the Pacific presenting as the next decade's main conflict zone, the US needs a fighter jet that can traverse large areas without needing to refuel mid-air, a process that greatly reduces stealth and makes both aircraft highly vulnerable. This sixth-generation fighter would also likely house hypersonic missiles with ramjet engines that can only activate at supersonic speeds. Plus, a faster aircraft extends its missile range, allowing it to launch conventional missiles farther than today's jets. However, the NGAT program is not only one aircraft. It's a distributed team. The manned-unmanned teaming concept will pair each fighter jet with advanced drones that have varying capabilities. This network will be driven by advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning. But unlike drones we see on the battlefield today, these will not be expendable units. The military prefers to use drones over human pilots for two reasons. Firstly, they are cheaper to produce at scale than fully developed fighter jets. Iranian Shahed drones used in Ukraine cost only around $20,000 to produce. Secondly, using these drones with the NGAT fighter or NGAT compatible F-35s reduces risk to pilots and allows them to accomplish more during one mission. But here's the thing, the NGAT program isn't only designed to network with other air units. In the late 2000s, the US Navy introduced a new class of warships called the littoral combat ships. Navy commander Nathan Rowe described the LCS as, quote, an entirely new category of warship. The carriers, cruisers, and destroyers are more like desktop computers, whereas an LCS is more like a smartphone." Unquote. The idea was to have a network of agile, stealthy surface combatants capable of fighting asymmetrical threats. In other words, the primary goal of LCS was to ensure naval dominance in coastal areas and to provide versatile capabilities like hunting submarines, countering sea mines, and engaging in surface warfare. However, after 15 years of operation, the LCS program is in deep water. The ships themselves are three times more expensive than the originally planned cost of $220 million per ship, and they regularly have technical problems. The LCS also abandoned its original idea of modularity. As a result, it lacks survivability and lethality in the water. Some are being modernized but most are being silently retired. Today, the Navy is working on projects aimed at teaming manned and unmanned units together. And with the F-35C now a part of the US Navy, warships need state-of-the-art communications and electronics to connect with the jet's distributed team network technology. And frigates and destroyers are at the heart of this modernization. Constellation-class frigates are the first to replace the failed LCS program. Designed under the FFGX program, these small surface combat ships are projected to cost around $500 million each. The Constellation frigates are based off of the current FREM class of multipurpose frigates widely used in Europe. They will also mix current technology with the capability to integrate future systems, like the CLAWS laser system, and are expected to enter production in 2030. Another central figure in the US Navy's evolution is the destroyer. The US had previously built the Zumwalt class destroyer, meant as a modern version of the classic battleship which dominated the seas a hundred years ago. Larger than the Navy's frigates, these ships were planned to be used for sea-to-land operations. But a new threat of China's fast-growing navy in 2008, plus a variety of other reasons, caused the navy to switch priorities and lower the construction plans from 32 ships to only three. This caused the price of Zumwalt destroyers to explode to $4.24 billion per ship, 
triggering the project's cancellation. The Zonvolt's replacement was announced as DDGX, an evolution of the widely successful Arleigh-Burke-class destroyer. This is the Navy's next-generation destroyer and is a vital part of what the military has called Project Convergence. This project aims to assemble the U.S. military's various parts into a single cloud-like entity. Whereas the Joint Combined Arms philosophy focuses on specific operations, Project Convergence aims to take combined arms' main principles and integrate them in the very fabric of how the military operates. But how will the future destroyers and frigates help connect land and air units together? These ships will combine state-of-the-art weaponry, like hypersonic missiles and direct energy weapons. They will leverage AI-driven capabilities to communicate with all the units around them. They will in turn provide data to pinpoint real-time locations of hostile units and precise guidance information to strike them. The DDGX also prioritizes risk mitigation. It's designed to minimize human exposure in high-stakes operations, using unmanned systems for early warnings and as extended sensory apparatus. This not only increases the ship's operational footprint, but also drastically reduces the threat to naval personnel. And these naval drones are already in operation today, and not only with the U.S. military. Recently, Ukrainian forces used naval drones like this one to damage the Kerch Bridge, a vital bridge connecting Crimea to mainland Russia used for transporting equipment to the southern front lines of the invasion. These naval drones are far quicker and more agile than manned boats due to the reduced size and weight. And thanks to basic buoyancy physics, they can carry a much larger amount of explosives than their air or land counterparts ever could. And they can do all this without being detected. Recent additions to military's naval fleets include much smaller boats than the ones you usually imagine when you think Navy. The Shadow Seal is one of these boats which can hold up to four people and runs entirely on powerful batteries, meaning it makes less noise and produces a smaller heat signature, making it much harder to detect. However, if we're talking about their stealth capabilities, lower noise levels is a tiny detail, because these are not your typical boats. Although these systems are still being piloted by humans, their simple gamified controls and modular turret placement make them ideal candidates for becoming a part of Navy's manned-unmanned team. With the war in Ukraine showing the efficiency of man-portable anti-tank missile systems such as Enlaz or Javelin, the idea that the tank as a platform is becoming obsolete has grown significantly. However, a major flaw in this theory is that it only considers legacy tank models like the Soviet-era tanks being used in Ukraine and fails to consider more modern joint combined arms tactics. Combined arms operations use different military components like infantry, armor, artillery, and air support together on the battlefield. This tactic is designed to eliminate weaknesses in each individual unit while maximizing their strengths. In other words, if used well, combining mechanized infantry with drone pathfinder units and defensive scouts could help protect tanks from enemy rockets. The Abrams X, a new Abrams tank prototype by General Dynamics, shows that the days of tanks are far from over. It has all the elements of a modern tank, like an active defense system and explosive reactive armor, but also features an autoloader, reducing the tank's crew from four to three. This prototype is built with single space for the crew in the front, where they'll be best protected. Modern anti-tank threats like bomb-equipped drones and man-portable missiles are designed to strike directly at the turret, where the armor is the weakest. So this new design could help save lives in a future conflict. That said, this prototype's biggest innovations are far simpler. Its hybrid electric engine would consume 50% less fuel than current Abrams models, which need over one gallon of gas per mile. More importantly, it weighs 10 tons less than the almost 80-ton M1 Abrams we see today. This will make transport easier, 
but it also means that the Abrams X could actually cross bridges without the risk of tanking them. But the Abrams X doesn't stop there. It also seeks to revolutionize the entire tank command structure using its own eyes and brain. But how can a tank see and think? The answer is the Catalyst Electronic Architecture software system. The Abrams X will have a series of cameras all around its hull. And when paired with state-of-the-art helmets, like the ones used by F-35 pilots or something similar to the IVAS system, crew members will have the ability to see through the tank's armor. This level of situational awareness is further enriched by the ability to integrate and display data from drones and other sensor systems directly on the crew's head-up display, a major leap in tank command and control systems. But what if the Abrams X didn't even need human operators? What if all military assets were controlled by a central artificial intelligence like Skynet? And if so, what role would humans have in future warfare? AIP has established which unit is closest to the enemy tank. Our commander can now begin to develop an operational plan for Team Omega. First, the commander uses AIP... This is Palantir. It's an artificial intelligence platform built for war. Think of it as a chat GPT that sources military intelligence, plans strategies of engagement, controls drones, and sends commands to troops on the ground. Militaries around the world, for example in the US, China, and Europe, are all investing time and money into these platforms. For decision makers in conflict scenarios, AI can significantly enhance situational awareness, for example, AIPs can analyze satellite data to detect unusual military activity. Using this data, they can identify suspicious movements like unexpected ship activity near critical trade routes or identify a naval ship's sudden change in course. This rapid assessment helps commanders find potential threats and adjust forces in real time. However, data gathering isn't limited to satellite feeds. Machine learning models can recommend the most effective units for surveillance, such as unmanned aircraft, to provide live video streams. AI-driven platforms can then instantly analyze the video data, identifying ship dimensions, speeds, and weapon systems. By combining data from diverse sources, both public and classified, these AI models can help military planners to completely see through the fog of war giving them a huge advantage in decision-making duel. But intelligence gathering is just the tip of the iceberg with these AI platforms. Just like ChatGPT, commanders can talk with these systems using natural language to actually execute orders and control their assets. Electronic warfare is one of these use cases. AIPs will be able to detect enemy communications and give troops tactical advantages by recommending jamming operations. That said, in a future military network, units and troops will be fitted with augmented reality systems like the IVOS, and vehicles like the Abrams X and air and naval distributed teams will constantly feed target and terrain information to each other using an AIP as a central nervous system. This all-encompassing network will give commanders the ability to plan and issue orders to manned and unmanned units from behind their computer screens. With the help of large language models, like the ones developed by OpenAI and Google, commanders can ask these AIPs questions about what the battlefield looks like and ask them to suggest different courses of action for any situation. Then, AIs like Palantir can calculate the best strategic responses to these situations far quicker than any human decision-maker ever could. By accessing units on the front line, they can task striker assets like drones or missiles in real time to attack enemy forces before they even understand what's happening. A bit like playing chess against a supercomputer. Even though these systems are designed with safeguards in place, which prevent them from sending orders without human verification and validation, similar AI models have already been reported to teach themselves ways of bypassing security safeguards. But think for a moment, 
If the future wars are going to be fought entirely between machines controlled by AI, what will be the role of humans in societies defined by conflict? We have no idea, but one thing's for sure, it's not what you think.